みなさんこんにちはアーサーです今日は日本に住んでいる外国人とのインタビュー動画をお届けしたいと思いますまあ、これはいつもと違う内容の動画にはなりますが皆さんの参考になれたらとっても嬉しいですまあ、実はこのような動画は多分以前にまあ、2、3年前ぐらいにあの作ったことは2、3回ぐらいあると思うのですがあのやっぱりこれからシリーズ化しようかなと思っています。まあ、あの英会話レッスンにはなりませんが、まあ、字幕がついてるし、まあ、皆さんの勉強になれたらなと思っています。Then, you know, I really want to make these videos for you to help you get closer to international people. My hope for you is that you don't just learn English, but you use it as a tool to connect with people. で、まあ、今回の動画はきっかけとして、まあ、外国人に寄り添って、まあ、外国人との距離感が少しだけでも縮んで、And so, if you want to see these kind of videos more, please let me know in the comment box below. I know, Kyo wa desu ne, I know, tabun mo, nana ne mai kara shiri atte iru Andy to you, tomo dachi to no interview desu. Ma boku ga nihon ni ryugaku shi ni kita toki ni, ma Andy to shiri a t If there's something else you want me to ask people in the future, please let me know in the comment box below. And with that, let's get into the interview. We'll try to shoot for about 15 minutes. So there's going to be like no, there's going to be no cuts.、Okay. So if something weird happens, yeah, just keep it's your fault. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay,、right. well, Andy, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so you and I, we actually have a long history. Can you explain to our viewers how we know each other? Yeah, so I think it was the first time I moved to Japan. You also just moved there? Yeah. And as I remember, the first time we met, we were at a Japanese English conversation exchange. Group, yeah.、Right? And like NHK was filming something. That's right.、There. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They're filming, they filming something for NHK、yeah. while we were there. So we were on TV when we met. Yeah. So I actually I do remember、um, like we met at that cafe,、mm-hmm. a British pub. Right, right? the、yeah. British pub, right? But then you ended up coming to my Eikawa Sakura every Wednesday. And I don't know how we. Yeah. That jump? Actually, I still don't remember. <laughs> I, I, th- I feel like it was maybe the second time I went、yeah. to that first meetup. Yeah. You told me about that、uh, Eikaiwa group and invited me. And、okay. at that time, I wanted to practice my Japanese and get better because I just moved to Tokyo. So, okay. That that's m- must have been how it happened, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, so everybody, you know, I am、um, back. So, no, YouTube, I was in the first time, I was in the first time, Andy and Eikaiwa Sakura, my show, Shibia, they had to do this. And then and I had to go back to America for a bit. And you、mm-hmm. went back a little while after that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so let's talk to people about、um, how you, your experience with Japan. So, how did you first get introduced to Japan? So, the first, you know, the first time I became interested in Japanese culture and Japan was actually when I was a college student, I was studying Japanese martial arts. Oh, really? Yeah. Like what, what kind?、Uh, Kenjutsu. Ken- Which is sword. Yeah, yeah. not kendo. With, we, we would practice with real swords. Oh, wow. Or, or we would practice with wooden swords, but also learn how to eat, draw、okay. a real sword. That was your、yeah. first experience? Yeah, that was my first experience. And part of that training or the, the, the class I was in, we had to do shodo every weekend、okay. as part of you know, the course. So, so I had to learn Japanese to understand the kanji that I was、okay. writing. So, wait, wait, wait. So, so. You don't have any kind of contact or introduction to Japan before. You just go to college and, like, oh, I can play with swords? Well, yeah, yeah I think, it, I mean, it sounds strange, but yeah, before that, of course, I saw manga and、uh, anime, the Japanese、mm-hmm. cartoons, but, you know, I was into them, but not, not so much.、Um, that was my first exposure, obviously.、Yeah. Uh, but then in college, it was one of my friends who was, you know, this American guy, he was really into Japanese、yeah. martial arts,、okay. karate, and kenjutsu. So, when he, I, saw him, I saw him carrying this wood sword, and I, I, I was like, oh, that looks interesting. Oh, wow. And he just asked me to visit the class, but then I ended up joining、wow. uh, for a, a few years, actually. Okay.、Yeah. So, so, basically, you do kenjutsu, and、yeah. then you have to practice shodo, and then you、right? wanted to learn so that you understood what you were writing. Right. So, then, then, then I, I enrolled in a Japanese language course at my college. Okay.、Um, it was a bit late in my, my college career. 
So it wasn't a major. I just okay. took the intro class. And then through that course, I met other Japanese language students, people okay. interested in Japanese culture and became friends with them. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. I didn't, I mean, I knew you took Kanjutsu, but I didn't know that was the first yeah, introduction. Yeah. Or that, that. that's how I got interested, okay. interested in Japanese culture. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So then we go from there and then you end up deciding to live in Japan, yeah. right? What happened between those two points? How did you go from learning Shodo for Kenjutsu right. to living in Japan? So after I graduated, you know, I was living and working at my first job. Mm -hmm. um, and I got married. Um, my wife is Japanese. Okay. So I, I started becoming more interested in learning the Japanese language and improving the foundation I had. Okay. And I, you know, at one point I... You know, of course, I was traveling to Japan mm -hmm. and visiting and enjoying that. But I realized that to make my Japanese language improve faster, mm -hmm. I, living in Japan, having that experience would help. Okay. So, yeah. so what? when did you visit Japan for the first time? The first time I visited was 2005, okay. I believe. Uh, that was my first trip. And I, I was traveling with that friend who introduced me to oh. Kenjutsu. Okay. So we both decided to take a trip on my, it was my winter break. Okay. Yeah. And so you go to Japan the first time. This mm -hmm. is now 15 years ago. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel old yet? Very. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, very old. Yeah. Especially remembering how different Japan was. Yeah. I, I don't know if it, I was different or, okay. but, you know. You know but, I yeah. mean, I feel like Japan has changed even since 2013. Yes, you know? definitely. But, yeah, yeah. So, so you go to Japan. So first of all, how long were you in Japan that first time? That first time I was in Japan for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. And what did you do those two weeks? Uh, so we traveled to Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, and Nara. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we had the JR Rail Pass, so okay. we could ride around. And we basically, I mean, back then, we didn't have smartphones. Mm -hmm. We didn't know where we were. We were. It was a lot of getting lost and just walking okay. around. Um, and it was just, I was uh, blown away and amazed by how okay. big Tokyo was and how busy it was. Yeah. What was, um? so what was kind of the the most, like in Japanese, you say inshoteki. Inshoteki. Inshoteki, that's like the most impressionable or like the thing that left the largest imprint and you like the thing you're going to remember the most like first of all how do you say that in english um, the, the thing that stood out to you the most the thing that was most impactful for you impactful yeah, impactful, that's what I would say. impactful? Yeah, yeah. okay not impressionable but impactful okay so what was what was the most impactful thing about your experience in japan like the thing you'll remember forever so i think the most impactful moment or experience i had was when we were visiting kyoto okay we uh, i forget how we met him we met a local mm -hmm. a local man an older man and we, i think we met him at a coffee shop okay and he ended up being our kind of like guide and friend for five days we were only just supposed to stay in kyoto for three days okay. but we ended up staying longer because he was he would hang out with us every day we'd meet at this coffee shop and he would take us around <laughs> to all these places like okay. local places in kyoto Okay. And he even, I think he even got his car and drove us somewhere. So yeah. my, my first impression was, wow, like a stranger that we just met, you know, being so friendly yeah. and taking us around and enjoying, like showing us good food and enjoying yeah. our time was really, I was taken aback by that. Because yeah. in America, I can't really imagine a yeah. American doing that to a tourist. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing that I've really loved about living here is just seeing like the desire for people to kind of share their culture, share their background or share Japan with with visitors yeah you know a lot of in a lot of countries i feel like people don't like tourists right yeah <laughs> i do yeah i feel like that way too and mm -hmm. and before you know my first experience traveling out of um, the usa was europe okay and i didn't feel welcome there yeah right <laughs> dude the american yeah, yeah, yeah. you go back home <laughs> yeah right, right, right. so okay so so then 2005 was when you first visited japan and then you went there sometimes mm -hmm. and then 2000 14 was yeah. when you moved yes okay so for, um this is this is kind of interesting so what what was different about living in japan versus visiting yeah that's a good question it was completely different yeah. you know, being a tourist and a, a resident um it was it was very hard for me because it was, it was actually also my first time living in a foreign country okay and japan is so different yeah from the u.s so there were a lot of adjustments i made a lot of things i learned but um 
yeah, when you're when you're traveling, it, oh, it's fun and exciting because you're you're not working, you're yeah. you're just having fun and eating, and and you're a visitor. But yeah, living there is is one of the most challenging things I've ever done. So yeah, at but, that time. So it was more challenging. But in what kind of a way was it more challenging for you? I felt. Um, I think we talked about this before, but my responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, living there to like really understand the rules and, yeah. and behaviors and, and really improving my Japanese and, and trying my best mm -hmm. to fit in. Yeah. yeah. So I think that was the hardest part. For you, me. you felt more pressure to blend in. To exactly. Be part. Yeah. Right, right. I see that. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember how like I used to live someplace and I, I always paid very close attention to putting the trash out on schedule, right. but there was someone in my apartment complex that didn't. Yeah. And then everybody thought it was me. Right. I was doing right. That. right, right, right. Yeah. I'm always so, worried about, yeah. um, you know, my impression of being yeah. a foreigner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that's really interesting. So, okay. So what, so now you've been living in Japan. So you lived in Japan for about two years. Mm -hmm. You went back to the States you came back, now you're working with me, mm -hmm. building the Uconnect website. And uh, <laughs> if you guys have a problem, please complain to this guy. <laughs> not, not this guy, this guy. But um, yeah, so what is something about Japan that you really like compared to other places you visited in the world? Um, yeah, it's difficult to say. There's so many things I like about mm -hmm. Japan. There's, there's also things that are difficult, but... Uh, I have to say that the convenience of not having to have a car yeah. is nice. And that's just Tokyo. That's not so much Japan. Mm -hmm. so, but also being able to travel anywhere in the country with a train by train. Yeah. You know, if I want to go to a mountain or to the, see the ocean, I can just get on a train. Yeah. So it, because it's small geographically, you can see a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I also like the food, of yeah. course. Um, onsen. Onsen? Yeah. For food, what's like... What's like the food that you really like? My favorite, food? my favorite food. It always changes, but I really like unagi. Unagi. Yeah. Yeah, dude. But I don't eat it very often. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can't really eat it very often. Right. It's expensive. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny how like, you know, back in the states, whenever I had Japanese food, it was always sushi. Oh. And that okay. was like my only interest. So like, what's your favorite food here now? My favorite food is uh. Actually, Noodles. I like soba or nabe. Uh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like those two things. Like recently, you know, I'm making my own soba kiri right, and stuff, right. so that's really fun. Yeah. But, but yeah, I don't know. It's like back in the states where I'm from, right on the East Coast in Boston. There's some Japanese people, but it's the only Japanese restaurants were really Chinese restaurants that had sushi on the menu. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like. They were no longer. Same where I'm from. Too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they were no longer like Chinese restaurants. They were Asian restaurants. Yeah, like Korean. Yeah, yeah, Korean. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what I had. But the thing that I really like about Japan is, like you said, it's convenient, it's safe, mm -hmm. um, the food's really good. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I really like about living here is, I feel like there's this really big artisan culture, like shokunin culture. Yes, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah I like that too. Yeah. How, you know, people focus on, on, on making something better and yeah. really good quality. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good because it's like when, when the thing is good and the, the product it has a demand, yeah. they make really, really good products. But sometimes people focus on really improving products that people don't have demand for, like oh, computers right. now. Right. Robots. Yeah. Well, I suppose robots, robots are important, too. but yeah. But like, I, I just remember looking in, um like on the train on an advertisement that said the new Fujitsu computer has these features and it was all hardware stuff. Yeah. But in the States, everything's now software. Right, right. And matter. I think that's, um, I forget what the phrase is in Japanese of the culture of handmade, uh, sorry, maybe, maybe I'm okay. making this up, but someone told me that software isn't big because people focus on more physical. Yeah. Uh, creating physical things. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. right. That's physical what, craftsmanship, right. That's why Tower Records is still in Japan. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I kind of like that too because yeah. around the world, like the, the the artisan or the physical qualities of, mm -hmm. of products is declining. Like yeah. in the United States, craftsmanship yeah. seems to be going you know, yeah. down. So it's yeah. good to see that maintained somewhere. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I really agree with you. Like in the – so in New England, we have um, – on Cape Cod, there's actually a type of basket that used to be made back yeah. 200 years ago. Yeah, yeah. That was really, really 
it used to be really popular and actually it's expensive now one bag one one basket is like three hundred dollars but right. now there's only wow. there used to be like 400 people who did it and yeah, now yeah. there's only six really yeah oh wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so do you think in in japan that's sort of happening too because I, I know there's a lot of old artisans that have been you know it's a generational yeah. thing you know I people know. who make umbrellas or like you know i if i don't it's, if it's declining or if it's i don't i don't know so Please let us know in the comment box because I'm I'm kind of curious about this too because one of my favorite things is these kind of shokunin Yeah, goods, and know? I think it's important to preserve this culture yeah. because it's, you know, it, it would really be tragic if it's lost, yeah. right? Yeah, like I know I know a guy who, he's a pretty rich guy, but he, he comes to Japan to buy knives. Like oh yeah, kitchen knives, yeah. you know. Right. And he's like, "Yeah, dude, these knives are like the best in the world." Yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. it'd be a shame if those go right. away. Right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I like coffee culture here mm -hmm. so much is because it's really like, nandemo kiwameru. They just try to make it like they try to take it to the limits. You yes. Know? But yes, exactly. So okay, so let's get a little back on track. Yeah, sorry, no, going on a tangent. Now okay. I could talk about this it forever. Was really good. Yeah. Yeah. But um okay so so you're living in Japan um what was one of the most shocking experiences for you living in Japan uh so it's it's been so long it's hard for me to go back to that mindset um well it's not necessarily like something in the culture it's like an experience you had that was really shocking like did a guy like attack you someday no something? i mean well i think that's happened but uh, <laughs> no i think for me the most shocking thing was the um, being on the, the the crowded train okay. during rush hour. Okay. Like that level of, especially in Japan where I thought people, you know, people kind of keep distance. Yeah. But being on a train where people's bodies are pressed against each other, mm. when I first experienced that, it was the strangest. Yeah. The strangest thing ever. And I, to this day, I don't like that. Yeah. I mean, nobody likes that. So. Yeah. I, I so. kind of like it. <laughs> I mean, You're strange, I, I, th yeah. I think I like it because I don't have to choose it because I don't have to take the rush hour trains anymore. Yeah, but, right, right. I mean, right, it's right. it's like you only you experience that in very few places. Exactly, it's a cultural experience. I think experience. it's only Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah, right. It's just just here in the whole world. Yeah. I don't think that exists. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. I don't. Yeah. I, I agree the space with you. in general, you know, like mm -hmm. being in really small confined spaces. Yeah. Took me a while to adjust to coming from America, where there's so much space. Right, but you've also so you've also traveled outside of Tokyo, yeah. quite a bit. Like you've been to mostly South... Europe. No, 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 oh, and outside of Tokyo. Oh, Japan. Japan. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Japan, yeah. So what um, like what other places in Japan have you been to outside of Tokyo? Uh, do you want me to list them all? Because it's, I mean, I it's quite a few, but yeah, just, uh, just Hokkaido, do your best. Akita, Sendai. Hiroshima, Kanazawa, Osaka, Kyoto, Nagasaki, Fukuoka. Uh, Come on, man. More. There's got to be more. I haven't been to Shikoku. Shikoku yet? I should list yeah. where I haven't been. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's, you've been more places than I have. So. <laughs> but, okay, yeah. so out of all those places, so we know Tokyo is kind of like a unique place, right? Right, right, right. So what, um, outside of Tokyo, what's your favorite place in Japan? My favorite place is Hokkaido, I think. Okay, why is that? Yeah, because, I mean, it's cold, but it, it, it almost reminds me of home. It's not as cold as where I'm from. What's, what's Minnesota like where you're from? It's it's really cold. It's <laughs> it's like, I think right now, maybe minus, the low is minus 20. How, okay, so every year, how much snow do you guys get? See, the snowfall, I don't know the exact amount. I don't think it's, it snows a lot more in Japan, okay. actually. Um, okay. But, so the snow isn't the problem. It's the low temperature. Okay. And it's okay. very flat. There's no mountains. Okay. Yeah. But what I like about Hokkaido is it, it's cooler, cool in the summer. There's mountains. There's mm -hmm. the ocean. There's good food, good okay. seafood. There's a lot of space. Okay. And people were very friendly there, Okay. I, I felt. So it's one of my yeah, favorite places. I, I, I really want to go to Hokkaido. You would love it, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's very nice. Go maybe in the summer where it's it's cooler up there. Yeah. You can escape the heat down yeah. here. So. Yeah. So... It's so, as someone who has been in Japan for a while, and you've been to many places, you kind of have experienced a lot of things. What would you say to someone to encourage them to come visit Japan? Like, if someone says, "Oh, Japan, why should I visit Japan?" What would you say? So, 
I mean, I'd first like to know what that person's interests are, yeah. but I'm sure everybody loves food. Yeah. We can agree on. So I would tell them that it's some of the best food that okay. you'll have in the world, and it's not too expensive, mm -hmm. right? Uh, other than that, I'd say it's it's especially now compared to when I first came, it's easy for foreigners mm -hmm. to travel. Yeah. Even if you don't speak much Japanese, I think it's they made it a lot easier. Okay. So. How'd they make it easier? Uh, so when I first came to Japan, there were there were almost like, especially the subway. There was no English. Okay. The signs there was no English. Okay. Um, uh, now I feel like more people speak English or are you know willing to talk mm -hmm. to people in English, and also yeah. there's more signs. And of course now people have smartphones, mm -hmm. so they can get around everywhere. But uh, yeah, so I would say it's easy to travel because it's safe. To, okay. You know, women traveling alone mm -hmm. are generally safer here than okay. most other parts of the world. I'd say, okay. So. Interesting. Interesting. All right, so that's so that's really good to know. Um, okay, and our final question is going to be, um, what? So a lot of people watching this channel, they want to connect with international people. They mm -hmm. want to get to know people and practice English, and not just practice English, but use it as a tool to connect with people, right? Yeah. What's but a lot of people have trouble doing that. So what's something that they, what's some advice you have? to to people to connect with international people in japan or online or something i think uh i mean i think it's difficult to to connect with anybody i yeah. find but i think the the main thing is i feel like to not be afraid to mm -hmm. to challenge yourself and approach people because i don't think there's anything to lose by doing okay. it it's just putting yourself out there if someone you don't it doesn't work then it's fine there's many people and it's you know it's 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 always worth the chance to take right? okay so so basically it may be scared but um if you have an opportunity don't worry about getting shot shut down because if you do get shut down yeah well, there's there's many other people. yeah and that person you don't want to talk to anyway yeah you know? right but right. also i think it's just like uh at least from my experience the just the, the the encounters I've had with strangers in Japan while I'm traveling that mm -hmm. were friendly to me, uh, I I built some connections with some yeah. like friendships and and uh, it was always just a, a new experience where mm -hmm. you know if, if I didn't talk to them I wouldn't have had as much fun. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, so, but a lot of people too, you know, they they feel like they don't have opportunities to meet people. So yeah. if they have that opportunity, they they can't overcome their fear. But if they right. don't have that opportunity, so like where are places. Or how can they make those opportunities to connect with people? Um, so it's very difficult now, especially because there's fewer tourists. I've yeah. even noticed. Mm -hmm. Fewer um, tourists and also because of the, the pandemic, the virus yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, I always tell people, I think it's not so much important um, where you find people. I think I think it's the, if you, if you find an interest group, for mm -hmm. instance... That might be a good way to connect to people, okay. like to find someone who has the, the same mm -hmm. common interests as you. There's there's more chance of a, a stronger connection, yeah. Rather than just a stranger, mm -hmm. like a, at a bar or somewhere. I feel right. like you might talk to somebody, but it, it's kind of hard to connect, right? Right. Find someone with a common interest. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I that That's I recommend to do, yeah. too is the like, common interest stuff is good. A lot of people though don't really have hobbies, but yeah, what. What I, what I recommend that I think works too is join a group where people are trying to learn Japanese. Cause then oh, they'll yeah, want yeah, to yeah. That, is, that is the perfect place. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, so there are a lot, like even now with the whole virus stuff going on, there mm -hmm. are still places online where you can connect with people who want to learn Japanese and mm -hmm. they'd be more than happy to talk. But Yeah, that's a great place to that, learn, to just find people that yeah. would be interested in hanging out more. Yeah. How, how did you make your friends in Japan? I think. Do you have any friends? Yeah. Uh, well, there's you. <laughs> yeah, there's me. We're, we're friends, right? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, as far as my Japanese friends, I actually met. I think I met all of them through conversation exchange groups, Japanese okay. English groups. Okay. Um, well, actually, my one of my close, closest friends, he, I actually met him in America. He okay. lives in uh, Nagoya. Okay. But, but uh, other than him, yeah, all my friends were through. Okay. Language exchange. Do you, groups, do you yeah. recommend people go to language exchange groups to meet people? I think if they can find a good one, but I know from our experience, there's a lot of groups that I, I didn't think were yeah. very good places to meet people, be, yeah. just because of the the kind of people that go there. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how to say it, but I know that that's yeah. a discussion for another video. Yeah, but yeah. 
But I mean, you should, I mean, try anything, I guess. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's your thing. Maybe for, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't always great. But like I said, I, I was able to make friends yeah. through those groups. Yeah. Well, anyways, Andy, this has been a great discussion. I think this is yeah. great to wrap up. We're at like 25 minutes, so pretty good. good but yeah um i'm pretty sure you'll be back on here again because i mean we hang out a lot yeah and um yeah me asan jikai andy to hanashita toki ni nanika ano hanashite hoshii koto ga areba zehi ano comment nan de oshiete kudasai great all right andy well thanks very much and thanks a lot see you next time yeah well how was it? いかがでしたか参考になれたらお役に立てたらとっても嬉しいです。ま、これからいろんな動画を作っていきたいと思うので、もしこういうインタビュー動画をもっと作ってほしい場合はぜひコメント欄で教えてください。で、もしあの今後